Did you know that approximately 6% of the adult population in the U.S. has a fracture of the spine and most of them don't even know about it? This very interesting condition is known as a parse fracture or spondylolysis, which can cause low back pain and sciatica. I see this quite frequently in my clinical practice. Even though we don't know exactly how the parse fracture happens, most doctors believe that it is the result of a stress fracture in adolescence. Today, let me show you what a parse fracture looks like and what kind of problems it can cause. The lower back of the lumbar spine consists of five bones or vertebrae numbered L1 through L5 between the bones of the soft cushions called the discs. A pars fracture is a break in the bone at a very specific location right here called the pars interarticularis. Approximately 95% of pars fractures occur at the L5 vertebra and most commonly on both sides. Basically the pars is a narrow strip of bone which connects the L4-5 facet joint above to the L5-S1 facet joint below. So you can think of the pars like a bridge connecting the two joints. When the pars interarticularis develops a crack, it disconnects the front of the L5 vertebra right here from the back of the L5 vertebra right here. This is a problem because the front of the L5 vertebra is still tightly locked with the L4 vertebra above through the L4-5 facet joint. As a result, the spinal column becomes unstable, the L5 vertebra keeps sliding forward and it will drag the entire spine forward with it like this. This slippage is called spondylolisthesis, and the slip can gradually progress over a period of years, even decades. As the slip increases, the scar tissue and bone spurs at the pars fracture site will gradually grow over time and can actually compress the L5 nerve, causing low back pain which can radiate into the buttock, thigh, and even the leg and the foot. This radiating nerve pain is called radiculopathy, what people commonly call sciatica. I have a video about radiculopathy sciatica. I'm going to put the link in the description below and you can check it out if you'd like. Studies have shown that approximately 45 to 75% of patients with a pars fracture will develop spondylolisthesis over their lifetime. But it is important to remember that not all patients with spondylolisthesis will need surgery. In fact, only a small percentage of patients will. In the next video, I'll show you how spondylolisthesis due to a pars fracture is surgically treated, so stay tuned. If you subscribe to my channel and like this video, I'll really appreciate it. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching and see you soon.